happy May Day. I know, really, May Day is May 1st, but here in Minnesota, it is always celebrated joyfully and wildly on the first Sunday in May. May Day is such a wonderful day. It's my favorite holiday of the year. And this year, I'm not in Minnesota. I'm in Mexico. Usually, I don't go anywhere because it's so important in Minnesota to celebrate. We have a huge parade with puppets and thousands and thousands of people turn out and eventually we all sit on a bank and the sun rose across a lake, a giant sun puppet, and we all sing, you are my sunshine. In May, after a long Minnesota winter, it does feel like freedom that we can usually, I have been known to wear a parka, but usually we can be out, you know, just with shirts and not mittens and hats and all of the winter paraphernalia that binds us up. Spring brings a sense of freedom to the world. The flowers, everybody that's been hovering under the ground in Minnesota gets to come up again to bloom and to, to bring life back. And that is a kind of freedom. May Day is also about another kind of freedom. May Day is also around the world, though not celebrated ironically in the United States, it began in the United States as a day of worker solidarity. There were strikes in Chicago demanding an eight hour day. And similarly to what happens now at a lot of protests, police came and four protesters ended up dead. And it became known as the Haymarket riots. Here in Minnesota, May Day is both a celebration of the power of the people and of the spring. The puppet theater that makes the giant puppets always has some kind of a political agenda. They have a theme every year and, and people, I won't be able to do it this year, but people from the neighborhoods and kids and people of all ages go in and make the puppets that are going to be in the parade. It's not one where big corporations come in and, and with fancy floats, it's all made by the people. And there's this sense always, they after the sun comes over, they do a, some kind of a little play and good always defeats evil. I think May Day is particularly wonderful because it brings together both the joy in life and the fight for the common decency, for the well-being of all, for, for the worker, for, for the people. So often, we're asked to choose. Well, do you want to savor life or save it, right? In the words of E.B. White, I wake up and it's hard to know. Should I try to save the world with all that's wrong or should I savor all that's beautiful and right? And I think May Day is a time where we honor both. And freedom means both, I think. Individual freedom, the freedom, of course, it's not always spring. Of course, sometimes it is the deepest part of winter, but still the freedom to be ourselves without having to huddle, without having to hide, is a form of freedom. And collective freedom is also critically important. You know, I read a line lately, it was in a story about the art that was created as Nazi Germany became worse and worse. Uh, in those years in the 30s in Germany. And the last line of the article was, there are no individual pardons for collective guilt. Well, as Martin Luther King said, no one is free while others are oppressed. So my freedom is linked to the freedom of everyone else. Some people call that collective liberation. People call it all kinds of things. I think the interdependent web of Unitarian Universalism says to us, one, if one part of the web is flourishing and another part of the web is decimated, that whole web is where our freedom is located. The studies of the happiest countries in the world, which I think is so interesting, depend, people's happiness is so rooted in how everyone in that community is being served. And 
while we right now have leadership which tells us over and over that our goal is to be part of the elite and get away from the people who are suffering and that that's where freedom and happiness is to be found. Unitarian Universalism says no, it's in the whole, it's in the holiness is in the struggle for freedom for all of us. So when May Day, I think about all of this, I love it. When I'm in Minnesota, I see so many people I haven't seen all winter. There are always new babies, you know, it's kind of like lambing season and babies I never met before. And there are lots of kids in the parade with their little things that they've made. And usually the sun is shining and it's a glorious day. And, and it is not separated from all of the suffering part of the the parade is in fact lifting up the suffering so as we deepen into this theme of freedom and as you savor the spring wherever you are or the season wherever you are i invite you to reflect on your own freedom and how it is tied to the freedom of others and how part of finding your own freedom could be more fully working for the freedom of others. I'm so glad we're in this community together because none of us can do much of it. Each of us can just contribute a, a tiny, tiny bit right where we are. But again, I have to believe that when I think about the interdependent web, each of those tiny connections that we make lead to freedom for all of us. <laughs>